Hello, welcome to episode three of the Cotched podcast with me, Joe Valick. I just want to start off by saying we did the triathlon and thank you very much to everyone that donated. I raised over £325 for the Link charity, which means the world to me. So if you donated, then thank you very much. I'm very proud. I've still got the number on me. Look, I did it just today. Um, can't wait for the next one. Uh, and again, yeah, thank you to everyone that helped me train and donated. Much appreciated. Without further ado, let's get straight into the episode. This is a really exciting one. Uh, we're joined by Will Davis, who is a co-owner of Invicta Audio, which is a Bristol-based drum and bass record label. They are doing major bits, to be perfectly honest. They won uh, Best Drum and Bass Newcomers um, in 2023 two or three I believe um, and they got lots of amazing events coming up moon festival at the end of the year they're going on a 12 date tour around the country they got loads of exciting releases coming up so yeah this was was really great conversation uh, we spoke a lot about different things to be honest we didn't talk that much about drum and bass we did a little bit but uh, we also talked about um, tobacco products uh, football our career as petty thieves very small careers um, being back in school uh, lots of things. Uh, it was a great conversation. We laughed a lot. Um, so strap in for a very funny ride. Will, thank you for coming on. It means a lot. I hope you enjoy. Yeah, it gets a, it gets a bad name because it's yeah. bad people, basically. Well, because of the associations with it, I guess. Exactly, with some <laughs> of the... Some of the um, yeah, the bad people who are the racist yeah. patriotism and the like, good patriotism. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm a bit of a fraud Englishman myself, to be honest. Oh, yeah? I've got the accent, but I've got the Cotswold accent, but my family's like all Irish. My, my mum's 100% Irish blood. I think my dad's like a third or something, so... Better that, that way. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit more Irish than English. <laughs> That's good. I feel like most people just don't never want to admit they're actually English. <laughs> I kind of I like it though because um, it was quite humble beginnings as well hmm. for <clears throat> well for all of my uh, grandparents and great grandparents. Yeah. Um, being from I know my my grandma was from either Kilkee or sorry. Uh, either Kilkeel or Downpatrick. My gr- yeah, my gr- my grandma and my granddad from Kilkeel and Downpatrick in mm-hmm. like the co- the eastern coast of Northern Ireland, and then my on my dad's side they're all from like Cork in Republic. So yeah, very Irish. And my parents took me to the farm that my grandma grew up on. Wow. When I was like nine, I think. Yeah. And I remember, did, do you ever have the Alex Ryder books? It's like Stormbreaker. Stormbreaker. Oh yeah, mate. Love that. Mate, I had like the whole series of them. I remember it was this red one. I think it was called Eagle Strike. I'll have to fact check that. But um, yeah, it had like this red cover. And in this farm, like my sister and I were staying in the bedroom that my grandma used to stay in. I think they had like 12, 11, 12 kids in there. Wow. And me and my sister were like on a bunk bed in there <laughs> kind of thing. Like I've no idea how they did it. And yeah, I just remember holding this Alex Ryder book, like trying to read it in my sleeping bag, like <laughs> shaking. <laughs> yeah. There was a, a rumor about me at school once. Um, a friend of mine, I don't know why he started this. We were best friends, but I guess we used to start. But he started doing. it on you? Yeah, that, um, when we went to watch... You're still sport. best friends with him? Nah, not anymore, to it's be gonna fair. Say. <laughs> not about this, but it should have been. Um, the, that We went to watch Stormbreaker in the cinema and mm. he started a rumour that I cried during Stormbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dumb rumour, is And that? I was just like, you know, <coughs> and everyone believed it and no one mm. would believe me that I was like I would I didn't cry in Stormbreaker but and everyone was like I wonder if people I wonder if people actually like believed them or it's just a funny thing to take it is take the piss but I was open I was like I cried at Bridge to Terabithia I'll admit that I cried at Marley and Me oh yeah Marley and Me is didn't cry at Stormbreaker Marley and Me still to this day yeah like I've only ever seen it once for that reason (laughs) I'm too afraid (laughs) sometimes of what it'll do to me sometimes on a Sunday after a couple too many tricks you just need you just need them tear jerkers, mate. Mm. You need to, you need to get that emotion out. Yeah. What was the last movie you cried at? That I cried at. Actually, more recent than I care to mention, it was um, Pursuit of Happiness. 
Ooh, is that the Will that? Smith one? Will Smith and Jaden Smith. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've never seen that. Have you not? No. I I remember watching it when I was extremely young, um, with my sister and my cousins. She had a lot of us in tears. Nice. <laughs> but it's like That's it's happy though. tears. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the family. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nice. You can cry together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've started. We, we're recording. This is a great soft start. We didn't even need to do any intros, <laughs> but obviously, I would have done something before to um, say who you are. But it's Will. Hello. Hello. Good to see you. <laughs> Safe. Bro. Good. Thanks for being here. It means a lot. Um, I don't really cry at films much. <clears throat> um, sometimes I almost get there, and then I can never quite break the break the barrier a lot of the times even if i want to it's uh i can't but i cried at a coldplay song recently which was what? Um, which uh, was nice just listen to the single song or was it a set or? yeah well it was i heard it the first time i ever heard the song was we were watching <coughs> the their glastonbury set which yeah, was I'll, actually really I'll watch good that. it was sick yeah um, and I, I for years i've been like our oh, coldplay are kind of dead mm. like i kind of like some of their older stuff but they're kind yeah. of dead and um that set was sick and there i think it was called sparks it's the bit you know where they went into the crowd and they were on that little like i think so uh what's the word like a platform and they did like an acoustic do it, tune you do a little little cover of it boom 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 boom, <laughs> boom. that's the bass line <laughs> and sure. it was just like oh damn <laughs> and yeah we were with my girlfriend um dad and mm. me and him were both like so, not sobbing but we were both definitely yeah. crying together yeah. and then um, that's nice that's nice I was, at the end I looked over at my, at my girlfriend and she was just like <clears throat> what, what, what's wrong with the both of you <laughs> it's fucking, I thought you were it's gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter with you guys I thought you were gonna say like she was happy to see what a, a nice moment you two are sharing well yeah together. I think she, she probably was happy to, for that too <laughs> but she was also just a bit confused that like what's gotten into you guys um, too many IPAs, I think, was the problem. Um. <laughs> that Coldplay of class. That I watched that Glastonbury set as well, um, and I was texting my sister like, "Make sure you're there. Make sure you're there. Like, you got to go see them." Because that was one of the CDs that my dad used to have in the car. Mm. So like late nights driving back from like Warrington or Leeds to yeah, getting back to Cheltenham, like hearing talk, watching the rain out of the window in the mm. car. You know. Mm. Nice. Bit of pathetic, a good, pathetic fallacy. A great band. Yeah. Um, people don't put enough respect on their name, I don't think. Well, Twitter was going nuts. Yeah. On that, did you see the night of the Glasgow performance? On on Twitter, people were like nuts in a good way, like yeah. praising oh, them. That's good. Because I think it it has become sort of a a trend, hasn't it, to hate on Coldplay a little mm -hmm, bit, mm -hmm. which says potentially valid potentially potentially because they're a bit cringe yeah yeah i don't maybe they just get me in my feels and it's the nostalgia <laughs> i think yeah from from those car journeys yeah I, I think yeah their new stuff i'm not really a fan of but like mm. you know the classic tunes yeah like and they're yeah. a good performance they work a crowd one of my yeah. my best mate's brother he's like in a heavy metal band and proper rocker you know <clears> long <throat> black hair beard all that stuff and he's doing stage building in the millennium center mm. uh, in millennium stadium oh now called principality stadium <coughs> in cardiff and they have loads of big artists come through there mm. he does stage building and breaking whatever and in fact he's done stuff for like i don't know beyonce and uh oh my other massive bands and he said Coldplay before he was like oh fucking Coldplay just another mm. massive band and he said it was yeah. genuinely one of the best sets he'd ever seen was that where they have all the, like, the light like, wristbands wrist yeah. and stuff he said it was like that, I've never the, seen a band like perform like that yeah which is mad I think they they bring a sort of a different emotion that a standard band would mm. but obviously next year everyone's going to be enjoying Oasis for the first True. time in yeah. however many years at the millennium but they're kind of at different ends of the spectrum. Yeah, I think it is. Different. But yeah, Coldplay definitely in, evokes that sort of emotion. I, I, I think as well, if you scratch beneath the surface of eno enough people, it's probably a guilty pleasure of mm. quite a few people. Yeah, for sure. I'm not scared to admit it though. Up the Coldplay. Up the Coldplay. You heard it here <laughs> first. Um, <laughs> are there any drum and bass tunes that make you emotional in that sense? Because there are emotional drum and bass tunes. Um, I mean, definitely... There's a load of tunes which evoke a whole different range of emotions. Whether any actually get me upset, mm. I'd probably say no. Like, there's definitely some quite 
like pensive kind of tunes mm. um like a good a, word. away with me caliber remix oh, i was thinking of that Wait, yeah yeah um well i was thinking of the original oh okay which okay. i like but the remix is yeah. good as well i don't i'm not actually sure if i've heard the re- uh the original to be fair it's like a garagey kind of two-steppy kind okay. of kind of vibe bit slower i think it's like mostly like 120 ish oh right say. okay okay yeah a lot slower Maybe 130 yeah. i don't know um that and rumors by Sustance and Ruby Letitia, I think it is. I don't know that is one. a is um I don't even really know how to describe it. It's it's like if you were making like having like a dinner date in your own home and had like dim mm-hmm. orange light in. Yeah. Like that's the kind of mood <laughs> I feel. Nice. Um and then I guess stuff which makes me like just gassed. Mm. Watch, like jung- that is an emotion jung- yeah like yeah like ecstatic it's like jungle really yeah. um yeah hearing good jungle live is it it's like yeah it feels um like a a really good life moment because a lot of the time you think you're gonna hear good jungle and it turns out not to be jungle or at it's all. jump up with a rag of vocal yeah 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 <laughs> but when you hear good jungle in the right setting it's like this is special for sure Matt. i saw uh Goldie perform at, uh, is it the Beacon? The one in... Bristol Beacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah Bristol yeah, Beacon. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was a boiler room event. And yeah, I've I've never seen like crowd control. Like it was, mm. it was crazy how he... Like, was he with his band? Or was no, he just it, it was just DJing. Um, but yeah, the way he like manipulated the audience through his track selection was mm. just nuts. A real like, eye opener. Because I hadn't really seen too many um any artists that had been about for like as long as goldie had been so Hmm. i think yeah that experience really shone through yeah i saw him at forwards festival with his band it was quite funny this was that this year i know last year okay i didn't didn't go this year unfortunately but um yeah with his band and it was really funny because he was kind of just like doing nothing he was just I like th- kind of running around the stage and occasionally you have like a tambourine with him. Maybe he might. Uh, to be fair, he might have actually had a tambourine. I think he had like a sampler mm. uh, slash some drum pads that maybe had some bass samples on it. But he didn't okay. seem to be doing much. He was more just <laughs> running around like gas enjoying people, the like, getting on the mic as well. Yeah, and like like conducting his little band. He's got some vocals on him, I think. Actually, yeah, Go- I think so because I think I was. Uh, watching clips of Inner City Life live, like when I first discovered the tune. Mm. And it was, yeah, pretty much as you described, like the live band and him mm. running about. And I think he had a tambourine. <laughs> if if that's incorrect, <laughs> then I apologise. Sue you. Yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pioneer, but I've always heard like... I'm, his... I'm actually wearing him on my T-shirt. Are you? Yeah, yeah. Yes, we have to bust I'll, that out. In a get bit. it out in a bit. Um, like, yeah, he, he obviously is a pioneer. Everyone knows that, but... I've always heard the stories like how he didn't produce that much of it. <clears throat> but then I've also heard other people saying... What, and like tried to steal credit? No, not really stealing credit, but like working with producers. Like he was <coughs> the mastermind behind it, which I think is even more right. smart because he, so he was had the, idea. the ideas and he had the the songs in him, but he wasn't always able to produce them. So I, I think he worked a lot with other people, but it was like all got released under Goldie. I see. So it might be a more collaborative effort than mm. than the the f- like image of Goldie comes yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. A bit like um, is it is it Fisher that Australian DJ? I yeah, not yeah. Not I don't Fisher. think he really produces much of is his it? stuff. I've heard like someone else just makes it, and he so well, might have the idea for the drop. There are some industry plants though as well. Yeah, like I know. Are they real? Are they actually real? Well, you, I, know for, I know for a fact yeah. of someone, a friend of mine. Uh, I won't name names because I'm not trying to <laughs> get a case. But um, she had... She? She. <laughs> she had a, a major label reach out to her um, and they had a producer in place who was ready to like just produce as her um, uh, like profile kind of thing. Mad. Uh, and she rejected it. So fair play to her. That's good. Yeah. But that is that shit is real. Oh yeah, were they, they were already like a producer. Uh, no, she uh, just, uh, just DJ, uh, and was doing pretty well. 
um, online, and yeah, they approached her. That's mad. With this proposal, so it it does happen. It is real. Because you see, I see a lot of it online, and it's usually <coughs> it's interesting that it was a woman because mm. you often see it commented on women who have found success. <coughs> you know? And it's always like, oh, industry plan, industry plan. Like people say about Pink Panthers or like. Piri and Tommy, but mainly yeah. about Piri um, and well, other stuff. That's the, that's the thing with with those with those people. Like, if you don't know them personally, mm. how are you ever really gonna mm. know? Because even though obviously you can go on the song credits on Spotify and see who had a hand in making the tune, you're never gonna know like the proportion. But you'd like to mm. trust the artist profile, and you know. On the, on the most part, I, w- I wouldn't question it. You know, nah, sure. I, I'd say most of it is their own work for sure, and you know, might be a similar case to Goldie, where they might still have these ideas, mm-hmm. and that's where the creativity has been birthed. But if someone else is making it or helping them make it, it's, so you... it's not really an issue, is it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. As, It'd be as, good to know if, if if they're more transparent about it. As long as they're not just like a face mm. and a track's being given to them, like right, this is your track now. Mm. Like that would that would suck. Yeah, maybe that'll happen in future. Have you Some planted kind of anyone dystopia. in the industry yet? Have I? Yeah, certainly right. uh, not. <laughs> certainly <laughs> not. I mean, I'd I'd like to think that we've helped a couple people out, um, and yeah, just just worked with people that we enjoy working with that's um, and people that we like but certainly <laughs> no but planting. that's the thing though what's the difference then though because if you're if you're a record label <clears throat> and you sign someone where does the line where like what draws the line between an industry plant and just being signed to a label who is doing their job well do you know what i mean that i suppose is, there yeah. is like yeah ghost producer and that, not yeah. actually doing any work but well i th- i think an industry plant may you could define it as someone who has more opportunity given to them than they're worth potentially, hmm. and not not that's going to sound pretty bad actually. <laughs> <laughs> now that I think about it, <laughs> like, but I'm not trying to like this. And perhaps they've currently earned in their career. Maybe. But yeah, maybe it's um, yeah, people in the right places purposely accelerating them for hmm. financial gain. Hmm. Interesting. Rather than letting it, like, yeah, breathe naturally and let them get that natural popularity. Mm. So I wanted to ask, like, what does running a label actually look like? Like, because you were one of the founders of Invicta. There's three of you. Uh, Or there's two two main founders? Ish. Let's clear that up first. So Anton was the outright founder Mm -hmm. uh, and his uni group as well, I guess, because... He did business entre- entrepreneurship at UE mm-hmm. um, and he was in a group on a table in a workshop uh, yeah, at UE and they came up with the name Invicta and I think they yeah, just had to for a project and then <clears throat> Anton like, continued that out of class and yeah, came up with a couple of events, started doing those um, and then lockdown hit and... Uh, he had a mental health fundraiser planned at Croft of Rights. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, got cancelled because of COVID. Um, and then him and uh, our friend Lewis then started the record label. So that's how that started out. And from Anton just, you know, being a social butterfly mm-hmm. in Bristol for the previous, what, like well year ish I guess. Um yeah, managed to like reach out to all the contacts he'd made and uh produce the know of and stuff and bring together the launch LP and that was yeah the first ever project. Mm-hmm. Um so that was kind of yeah that's like the origin story and we're we're all in the fr- uh, the same friendship group outside of anything music related that's good so, so did you know him before in victor yeah i i guess so because uh he well just being an entrepreneur he put on an under 18 event 
in Cheltenham. <laughs> uh, and we didn't go to the same school, but because it's a fairly small mm -hmm. place, you know, if people are going out or interested in drum bass or whatever, you kind of know the other people a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, So him and Anais were at the same school called Cleve. I went to one in Bourneside, not too far from it. Uh, but yeah, so I went to his under 18s night. I think it might have been like a, a GCSE results party or something wow. like that. <laughs> so yeah, quite a while back now. Um, and then had had seen him doing his DJ and stuff before Bristol because he played at a venue in Worcester. I can't remember the name of it, but I remember he like there was like a CDJ setup, mm -hmm. and he brought along his controller and his laptop and played on that, <laughs> <laughs> plugged that into the rig instead. Nice. Um, no shame. Yeah. No. Well, Play what do works it. best for you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Go Gets on. the same results or better than I see no <laughs> yeah, problem with it. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, that that was how I kind of knew Anton. And then as we came into Bristol together, I guess we was because we both went to UE mm. at the same time, like September 2018. And, yeah, I guess just seeing him about at raves and things, knowing him from Cheltenham, just like occasional nod, something mm. like that. Um, and... Then I remember he put on his Snapchat story, uh, like, oh, does anyone want to help me out uh, doing some like marketing bits or anything like that? So I just replied, like, oh, yeah, interested, you know, mm -hmm. just like drum and bass. So, like, yeah, let's get to it. Why not? I'm interested to get yeah. started in something. Yeah. Um, ended up, he basically it was almost slave labor to be honest because <laughs> it wasn't really marketing he just gave me a bunch of posters and was like yeah just go put them up front of the city and i was like yeah all right cool all right, then. Yeah. um so yeah just went around bristol putting these posters up um which was the first ever invicta rave which was k motions at blue mountain who's obviously doing crazy things now um yeah, um, amongst a load of other of our mates, uh, Latte and Toxinate, uh, Anton, PDX, Lewis. Um, yeah, so that was the start of it. And I don't think I actually did much else for Invicta until after that first free download LP was released. Mm. I remember, uh, as I say, we're like since then become mates like, out of drum and bass. And we were at a party. A fancy dress party at one of our mates' house, and I think it, it must have been about six or seven in the morning. Mm. Um, good party, like, yeah, good party. Uh, having conversations outside, and I was doing accounting and finance at UE at mm. the time, so mm. my role was going to be like the, I guess, like finance director sort of thing, like overseeing all the finances. Um, and that quickly dissipated that role. <laughs> um, so I much preferred the like A R side of things, you know, getting involved in signing tunes, uh, reaching out to artists, um, guess kind of like admin side of stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just like around those times at the start, uh, like when I first got involved, there was a lot more of us as well um, because you know, people, well, people don't have full-time jobs and stuff. We're all in uni. Mm -hmm. So it was Anton, Lewis, Dan, Yayan, Matt, Hugo, myself. Wow. And sometimes Anais as well. It's a big team. Once in a blue moon. So it was like seven of us. <clears throat> and I'd attribute those Facebook Messenger group video calls to like a lot of our early success because it was just seven mates enjoying having these calls on Facebook Messenger, um, throwing a load of ideas into the mix. Um, like we'd always say, like, come to the meetings with one or two ideas about yeah. stuff we can do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we yeah have meetings twice a week. I think it was like a Monday and a Thursday or something. And like absolute minimum, they'd be like two hours long. Sometimes it got go until, you know, like three, four in the morning where <laughs> just sat there for hours and we got girlfriends nagging us to come <laughs> watch Netflix <laughs> and stuff. Um but yeah, that that was kind of the inception of it. And yeah, I guess that helped us out a lot as well because instead of just one person's ideas on how they think mm. something should be, 
you know, you've got this massive like panel, which was also a parallel of our target audience as well, because we were our own target audience. So you've yeah. got those different, like slightly different tastes you were and things. That you, were, you were trying to sell to yourself. Ex- exactly. Yeah. And to be fair, I still think we have that to this day. Mm. Um, Did it, I bet it didn't feel that serious at the time either. Did it just kind of well, feel like a fun project? Yeah. Like, oh, look at this. And then suddenly it's serious. Yeah, it's... I mean, I feel like we're almost still in that transitional stage, to be <laughs> honest. Um, That's a good sign, though. I mean, yeah. That you have fun with it. Yeah, cause, well, it, obviously, it, it never... You know, that from that Snapchat reply on Anton's story, I never was like, oh, yeah, it could be a full-time job one day. Mm. Um, yeah, it was just purely for the passion of it. Um, and, yeah, I... Never saw it getting this far, to be honest. Mm. I, I didn't even have that much, like, foresight, I think, to to even think about that. I was just doing it because I enjoyed it. Do you think Anton had a plan? I think so, yeah. Because he's the so. business mastermind. That's that it, like. yeah. He's he's always kind of been the spearhead of Invicta. Um, you need someone like that, though, right? Yeah, you need definitely. Someone to, to drive the ship. Yeah, definitely. And... I think that was very much needed over the first like two, three years to get us to the position that we're in currently. And I think his extremely high standards, or I'd like to think (laughs) that they've rubbed off on Dan and I, who now run it alongside Anton as as a trio. Mm. Um, So, and yeah, we're all extremely hungry for, extremely driven, takes up large majority of the week uh, for all of us um and yes yeah, it's, it's it's definitely feeling more serious now i'd That's say good. is it your only job it is i've i've been weirdly full time in Invicta for just over 2 years now wow um yeah i it got to the end of uni and i was applying for accounting jobs and some of my mates had accounting jobs so i was like asking to like give me tips and maybe little little bit of like nepotism into the job mm-hmm. potentially mm-hmm. um and fortunately i got rejected by i think it was like three or four places because of my a levels ah, um like I, I managed to somehow get a first in my degree um but yeah my a levels i think i got ccd or something like that um different times yeah very different times <laughs> um and yeah so i got rejected and then it was like then I kind of, yeah, just was like, do I actually want to do this? Mm. Like, do I actually want to be in an office? And I even remember my A-level maths teacher, uh, Mr. Hemsley. I remember so clearly him saying to me, like, you're never going to be an accountant. Mm. Like, you you know, you're more of a people person than that. You can't just be... Not in like a mean way. Not in like Yeah, no, he, he was saying it in like an encouraging... Like, yeah, this isn't really your calling. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, and... I remember big thinking, Mr. like, Mr. Hemsley. Yeah, big up. <laughs> no idea what he's doing now, to be fair. But. Probably still teaching maths. <laughs> yeah. If um, all being well, hopefully he's yeah. still teaching maths, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, well, yeah, he was obviously right. Mm. Um, and yeah, just came out of uni, and I remember chatting to my parents about it a little bit, like, kind of hinting at it. And then. There was one day in summer back home, you know, mum's put out like the picky bits on the table, that kind of setting. Nice. And that's sunny garden, like new potatoes, all of that. And um, I remember sitting them down. <laughs> I was expecting like not a beating, but, <laughs> you know, for them to kick off. Um, but yeah, they were all for it. They were like, you got to go for it. Like, you know, it's, it's obviously, it's got potential and yeah, like couldn't have been more supportive. So mm. um, yeah, that, that definitely helped, I'd say. Congrats. It's good when people's leap of faith like pays off because um, I've seen think... a lot of people take them and either it completely be the best thing they've ever done. More often that, yeah. but sometimes not work but you almost always i've seen it just like be the best thing they've ever done i th- i think you know well people have got enough enough common sense to kind of tell 
whether it's going to work out and also, also be honest with yourself mm. in how hard you're willing to work what are you willing to sacrifice to mm. make this work um but there's also a lot of luck in it as well but also like my dad always said to me you know you make your own luck by how hard you work mm. so and it's true it opens up different doors like just putting the hours in so um but yeah very to fortunate prepare, prepare to fail yeah definitely so back to the kind of original question, um, we've sort of cleared out Sorry, a bit the more. No, no, not really. <laughs> I think that was that was actually really a lot, like useful to hear all of that and okay. have a bit more understanding, especially for the people watching, um, about what Invicta is um, and where it came from. But yeah, what did what do you kind of do? What's your sort of job title? What is your day to day look like? I'm sure it changes every day, but yeah, ev every day is definitely different. I mean, the start of the day is the same. I've got a routine for the start. So get started at like 10-ish, clear the DMs, emails, um, make sure we've got an Instagram post, make sure we've got a TikTok post. Um, what else do I do? Yeah, kind of that stuff. Just like admin -y type stuff. Nice. Make sure everyone's being replied to because that can get ugly very quickly mm. if you leave emails or DMs. Like, yeah. I bet they stack up. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Um, but... In terms of my roles, I mean, Anton kind of heads up the events side of stuff and just general overseeing of the business and um, like new ventures and all of like the conversations with like the bigger artists and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they're his connections, so he deals with that kind of stuff. Um, Dan... Uh, our business partner he does like graphics cgi uh finance stuff funnily enough <laughs> um uh admin -y sort of stuff hr uh and yeah a load of other stuff like that whereas myself i'm a lot of like leg work for stuff that needs doing mm. um and a lot of label stuff as well like the label is more my forte so um, working closely with our distributors, you know, trying to get editorial support, things like that. Um, a and R with the artists, reaching out to new artists, seeing if they want to get a release together with us or something like that. Um, merch projects, um, yeah, just a whole amalgamation of different things. It's, which is, I know it's not a very good answer. No, it's a good answer. But it's it's difficult to actually put my finger on what I do because there's, like, it's, it's generally label and label stuff and legwork, mm -hmm. I'd call it probably. But because there's so many smaller tasks that fill up a day, mm. which are comprised of so many different topics, it's, yeah, kind of difficult to put your finger on it. Because, mm. As well, even though Anton heads up a load of the event stuff, I'm still heavily involved in that as well. Um, it sounds like you've got a tight team that like keeps the ship running perfectly almost. I, may, maybe perfectly is a generous it word. Keeps it running. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. We get by. We definitely get by. Keep saving. Um, it, it, it works. Sounds rewarding. It works. And yeah, for sure. But also sounds possibly like long days. Yeah. Do you find it eats into your like personal life quite a lot when in a business or being like in such a small I'd, business? I I'd I mean it's kind of down to us, I guess, because we've wanted to push ourselves to mm. to do as much as we can do. For sure. Um and always aim high. But yeah, what follows with that is it it's kind of a lifestyle rather than Yeah. Laptop open at 10, 6. All Close right, cool. That. Yeah, I'm out of here. Yeah. Was oh, that me? I want to see you. Should we answer? No, it's not. He's 12. He's 12? Uh, no, he's not 12. He's, um... <laughs> it's that on. Do not disturb. This is our first... First... Oh, it might be yeah. urgent. It might... It's not, it's not urgent. Are you sure? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you could... It might be interesting to pick up. Definitely not. He just wants to play GeoGuessr. <laughs> Which is a great game. Um, it is. I've never played it, but that guy, the GeoGuessr guy, is oh, crazy. Rainbow. 
of the American no, one. I've no idea, but it's whoever, like, oh, that's um, that's a Polish tree. Yeah, yeah. And it's like like five yards away. It's like, well, I think you should pick up. That's pick three up. times. Nah, or what if I pick up? I think it may have elapsed. Oh shit! I can't put you can't put your laptop on like <laughs> airplane mode. In fact, I can. I can put there we go Wi-Fi off. Cool. Daniel derailing the podcast. <laughs> um, like he's the magic of magic of editing. Or... Proper Dan. <laughs> um, yeah, what what's some good slang terms for for mates? You like Dan? You taught me Dan. I did. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, art club. He taught me Dan, and uh, I taught you John. I think. That's another one. John, yeah. Just matey boy. I like that one. It's classic. Um, kid, mush. Oh, mush is a good one. Right, mush. That's a very, like, that's a very ch- Cheltenham thing, I think. That's kind of the main one we use, to be fair, I would say. Yeah. Like, a lot of people on DMs, and like, you, you know, T-Lex? Yeah. She's known as T-Mush, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or, or Mushlex, maybe. That's a good, that's a good nickname. <laughs> I think her name is actually on our Facebook chat is is T Mush. Um yeah, Mush is just so versatile. Mm. And anyone that I kind of get a bit closer to, obviously I'll, I'll say it quite a bit to them so they tend to pick it up. Mm. And then I'll see them saying it in different <laughs> scenarios and I'm like, Let's see. It. I do love the way language like <laughs> develops, especially across a friendship group. In school mm. it was the worst, like Someone would say a word and you'd all be like, that's a stupid word. Like, no, then before no one you know it, it. Then one week later, you're all saying, <coughs> pick it up like that, especially I, when you're around people all day. I remember that with uh, bless. Like, when <laughs> I heard the word bless for the first time in like year nine or year 10. Yeah. I was, it was one of my mates was saying, I was like, why are you saying that? Like, what does that even mean? And then a couple of years later, <laughs> it's in the vocabulary. Exactly. Yeah, we, I was just peak. I used to hate peak, and then peak became in the vocabulary quickly. Um, I think peng as well. Um, peng that fell off. That did fell off. It became leng. It did. And then it you became. Don't, hear... don't really hear it much. Yeah. But you kind of hear was, leng what you occasionally. Say, what would you? I still say sick. Yeah. Just say same sick. old. Yeah. Oh, sick. sick works. Like class. That's um, class. I like um, just like stunning, lush, Welsh, stunning. L- lush. That sounds Welsh. Yeah, that's stunning. And uh, but is as a term I wish I used more, like butty, like all right, but it's like mate, right, but like, like that. Yeah, it's like yeah, butty. Yeah. Like when you go home, you hear right, people actually say it, and you're like, ah, oh, I should say that more because <laughs> it's a good, it's a good one, especially to people who don't know it and they're very confused. Like, what would you just say to me? It's like, no, nah, it's endearing. Yeah. It's an endearing term. Um, speaking of home, how mm. was life growing up in Cheltenham? Were you did you grow up on a farm, or you said like you you went next near to a farm, farm. next to like it, it was weird though because it was uh, there was a stream and then a farm, mm. and then the other side it's just like suburbia. Wow, um, okay. So yeah, quite odd, but yeah, I lived on a cul de sac which had what, seven or eight houses on? Nice. Like, a small road. Um, yeah, not very nice community. Um, my neighbours would call the police if the paper boy changed, like, that kind of <laughs> safe. <laughs> like, this, like, my parents would leave... Curtain twitches, like... Yeah, oh, personified. yeah. 100%. Um, my parents would leave the front and back door open the whole summer. Wow. Like, literally wide open, not just unlocked. Mm. But, um... Yeah, um, th- please don't go rob from my parents' house. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just like extremely safe, uh, very, very nice area, um, very fortunate. Um, and yeah, there, there was a farm next to us, a massive playing field nice. where I'd, I'd go on the weekends, play football with my dad, um, a park, uh, then a hill like behind that. You could walk to the top of, I think it's like an 800 foot, hill nice. um but you could do it from my house in like half an hour if you got a stomp on mm. um and yeah that was kind of primary school summed up like there wasn't really too much else to it and then going to Bourneside um was when I started getting into a bit of mischief like you know make, making friends with people that were maybe a bit more daring than <laughs> at the primary school <laughs> I went to um I remember so what's all about though? Growing yeah, up. yeah. I like 
we, me and my mate, my best mate, got arrested when we were eleven, I think. Oh, that's young. Yeah, we were. Um, I think my my mum took us. I think we we're in must have been year seven. Took us to Western Supermare or something, and big day out. Went to, big day out. Yeah. Um, Oh, no, it was, it was a little like getaway. I think we stayed for a few days in like a caravan or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it was like a nice trip. We actually tried our first cigarette there as well. Wow, that's young. Uh, yeah, we found it on the floor, <laughs> and we're like, we don't have anything to light it with. Remember, like tiptoeing back into the caravan. Obviously, you've got to use matches to um, light like the hob and stuff with. So, got one of them, and yeah, we just smoked the. A cigarette like behind a bush um <laughs> at 11 and then on the way back home my mum wanted to go to cribs causeway yeah so she was going around shopping and we we were both bored and we were like oh should we we we'll just, we'll just go off do our own thing found our way into the car park and you know the little uh like air cap on a, a tire yeah you know you can get like customers them like dice or like bullets or something like that we spent about three hours going round the car park <laughs> collecting these <laughs> like dust caps because we thought we could sell them at school or something. Yeah, to everyone and with cars at 11. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's just so dumb. Um, and then like the way you do it is like kneel down, pretend to do a shoelace up, hand behind the leg, unscrew yeah. in the pocket, nice. walk away, done. But there was a guy like ahead of me facing away in his car looking out his rear view mirror uh, or like the side mirror um saw me doing it ran over grabbed me took me into the security at cribs causeway oh. and then it was on the tannoy can laura davis please come to security <laughs> and i was like oh my god it's like i'm in trouble <laughs> yeah and yeah safe to say mum wasn't very happy didn't let me go on football tour um, that's unfortunate yeah yeah I remember that was that, that the, the start and end of your um, thieving career 100% same I only did one I only stole one thing did you get caught as well I got caught well it, yeah but pretty much it was kind of like the, it was in school right and me did you, did you ever have Go-Go's Go-Go's Crazy yeah, Bones yeah I, like I remember them little plastic figures <coughs> I don't really know what the point of them was or what they mm. did because no one we just collected them I don't think we used them to their yeah, it's, potential it's weird how those trends occur in like primary school yeah. but there's no actual use for them it was and just th there were so many crazes yeah. like for us we had Lego Star Wars figures Oof. was one nice um, uh, did you ever get the National Geo Ge yeah, Geographic Kids magazine that had like the resin Lock and an insect inside it. Nah, that's it. That became a that's crazy. That's an actual cool object, though. It was, and I think it was like five or six quid for one of these magazines. Wow. And you'd only get the magazines to get this you resin block. Read it, yeah. Well, maybe a little bit, but my, um, my dad would be pictures. like, "You're going to read this, aren't you?" I'd be like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> we did match attacks. Um, match attacks. We had Star Wars. Wars like dog tags. Dog tags. I think I'm they were little, like, little, little like metallic tags. Mm. Um, what would they have? What would they have? Like pictures of the yeah, characters? Yeah, they had like characters on it or something. Okay. I can't really remember. That was like the, probably the first thing I collected. To be fair, what like such a waste of money though because oh yeah, I, do I have them now? No, I didn't. yeah. So don't know where and they went. Top but, Gear cards we did as well. Ooh, did you yeah. have Top Gear cards? No, but I used to see them about. But I was the, always on the I think, match I think they had the stig on the front. Yes. Yeah, but I was always about match attacks back then. Football was match attacks for sure. When you pulled that hundred club. Oh, yeah, that Stephen Gerrard one oh one. That Crazy. was like, that was insane. Wait, did you have them, I think the season before that, there was Shea Given, was the 101, 101. <laughs> <laughs> so random to be the I've rarest card. I've heard of him. Really? The Irish goalkeeper used to play for Newcastle? Nah, I don't know. I think it rings a bell. It was like 2006, 2007, 2008, that That's kind of... Goalkeeper 101, 101. That's yeah. 100 attack on the goalkeeper. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> He's the guy on FIFA that would run at the pitch. Yeah. I used to love doing that because the commentators <laughs> would always just be so confused. They'd be like, oh, keeper's having a go. Yeah. And they would never be able to understand what was going on. Because can you imagine, you like football, can you imagine if a keeper did that? Like, they would be subbed off probably immediately for starters. And secondly, yeah. it would just be hilarious to see. I wonder if anyone's actually ever done that. I mean, they'd probably be investigated for 
match fixing. Mm. If they did, I would expect. Yeah, true. But yeah, these go gos. <laughs> uh, it was a Friday, and me and my mate had um, had planned the heist because the teacher confiscated. <laughs> this is in year five, and and yes. That we were in year five and we were in a, like a split class. You know mm. when they would have like year six or a year above or below in the same. They'd have like a split yeah, class. Yeah. One of the year sixes had his go gos confiscated mm. on the Friday afternoon, and me and my mate met after school. And we were like, "They're in the teacher's drawer. Should we go and nick no them?" No way. Was this your cunning idea? Yeah, I think so. Um, so I was the one I to go and do the in you, Joe. And then we went back. He was still waiting in the toilets. We split the the loot in the toilets, and then. Um, <laughs> Over the weekend, I think we were hanging out and we were like, we felt guilty. Mm. Um, the guilt ensues. Yeah, so he gave him back to me. And then on Monday, there was and obviously was a, a whole big ordeal about it. And teacher knew who it was. And uh, she was but, just like, all right, we're going to go on break. And I, th- th- I want them like, back in my drawer and no one will get in trouble. How how did she know that she... I don't know if she knew it was us, but... She knew Maybe someone she, in the class. She knew it must have been someone. Do you think you held a poker face like when she was talking about it then? Nah. So maybe Probably that's like how crying she and, and like <laughs> tears running down my face. Like, it's I'm the cold good, play, I swear. I'm a good <laughs> 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 so yeah, I never saw anything again because <clears> the, <throat> the fear that that, um, that gave me. And, mm. um, but yeah, I was a good boy. So, you know, I, was mm. a, I just didn't get in trouble. So even though I didn't get any repercussions, just the fear of being in trouble I never stole again I think yeah, yeah I, you can use that's a footrest it's not a very good one I don't know I don't, I don't I feel <laughs> that's, that's Le- legs aren't in shot spoiling myself a bit there I do this is the Koch podcast yeah though, it's after all. Um I think I was fairly well behaved I mean not in lessons me and my mates just used to get up to mischief like Mm. Did, did you ever do spitballs when you <laughs> nah <laughs> right, so well, you... with like a straw uh, yeah so well we used to just take apart a pen oh. uh, hollow out the pen and then get like a tiny it's absolutely vile now not like thinking back to it but scrunch up a, pe- a piece of paper really small spit on it wait for it to harden up mm. and then just shoot them around the class like that nice. and they would fly and people, you just get like, people like, ah, like that yeah just just dumb stuff like that I think just bored because yeah I, I don't think the standard of teaching was that great at my school to be fair and school was boring anyway school was boring I, I'm not sure I, it was fun because I, of the fun we made you know? yeah yeah well, well we always say like what we do to go back and have a day at school again just mm. mess it about like food tech and <laughs> just just certain teachers you could piss off so easily. Mm-hmm. Which yeah, we had one teacher. We must have gone through like 15 seating plans in like <laughs> one term. And then she just realized that there was no fixing the problem. Because obviously there's only so many seat. If there's only, the classroom's only so big. <laughs> yeah. So no matter how many variations you put us in, you can still just cause havoc. Especially when the whole class was in on it constantly. Yeah, I, mean, I felt it's... a bit bad for her, but like, fuck, fuck her. She well, at, at the time, you felt bad. Uh, maybe more so now. Yeah, in hindsight, in but hindsight, she was kind of a sure. dead teacher, so like, yeah, it's like fair. But at the same time, we, I... were, we were pretty savage. Do you know? What? Honestly, I have so much respect for anyone who does secondary school teaching. I think primary school is a lot more manageable, mm. but secondary, it's like, I would have hated to have been our teacher. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Kids are these days as well. What are they like? iPad kids. <laughs> Do you think kids are on like brain rot now as well? Oh, definitely, yeah. Because I know me and my mates send each other brain rot all the time. I do like a bit of brain rot. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've got, I got. I like this certain like um, certain genres of videos that uh, you only send to like the specific, subgenres of brain rot. specific friends. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like okay, that's perfect for this guy, but he won't get that. Yeah. And then there's some sure. specific like, oh, right, this is perfect for my mm. girlfriend. So like this. But then you get you, know. you get certain mates who just flood me with videos. And then it's like the occasional one I'll laugh react and the rest is like, what is this content? <laughs> <laughs> I like to save them up um, and I'll go on like a big spree of watching what mm. my mates sent me. <laughs> and then just I laugh react to most of them or like sometimes I angry react. If Yeah, that's a good one. Angry if react. it's a weird video or you just don't like it, then... <laughs> Hit them with the angry reaction. I might take that up. Um, 
or the yeah there's there's lots of different reactions you can do and they're all quite good fun i think there's a like a, a like a you know that yeah, one, that emoji yeah. that's a good emoji but um but, yeah you can hit them with that too so what's what's your like go to what do you enjoy in the brain rot subgenres it's a big question um it's quite for difficult. a while i got into the uh, Ami- amiga nugget um it was like a chicken nugget with the roblox <laughs> face on it singing <laughs> pot and i joe <laughs> and um for a while it was um it, no it wasn't my alarm i almost said it as my alarm but it, it was it was cotton eye it. It eye joe um to the theme of american dad okay um which was <laughs> stupid um and then i realized that that was i was wasting my brain cells um 100 percent. and now brain what what am i into i quite like um, That's the, I, I asked it and then the bottomy core is quite good the like, bottomy core. <laughs> <laughs> this is some deep valak lore people. Um, <laughs> and maybe just like yeah, that's quite that's quite big at the moment, and I do mm. like the. Uh, I know it's not so much brain rot, but I like the guy that's like, "What the hell?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jordan never did that move. He never would. <laughs> like you know, all those videos are, 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 are fucking hilarious. And cool. I always just imagine the wearer of the shoe whose face you never see. Yeah, what they must be going through. In Can that you moment. imagine if he came up to you in the street <laughs> just with his his phone like that? Yeah, he oh doesn't even God. look at you one time. He just <laughs> yeah. looks straight at your feet, grabbing your toes, singing. Oh, Slapping man. it. Like... What about you? What's your brain rot? Um, what's your favorite brain rot? Mate, to be honest, it used to be, it used to be really stupid memes which did, just didn't make any sense whatsoever. Like, do you remember like the moth lamp memes mm. back in maybe. maybe back in like twenty eighteen nineteen so just and then there'd be a caption that'd say like it'd be like a moth in a lorry <laughs> and the caption would be like breadstick or something like that <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like yeah. really dumb stuff which makes no sense whatsoever I I yeah, find I like it absolutely I find it hilarious shit, man. That was yeah good. yeah or like E is a good meme yeah f- yeah um I don't know. It's, I think it's difficult to recall memes because, well, they are yeah. rot in your brain. They're visual <laughs> memes for starters. And a lot of them, if you, it's almost embarrassing to want to explain because you can't explain so many of I them c- because it's mate, so... I can't even remember. I, do you know, I like the CGI ones now. Oh, yeah? Uh, the, um, the one with the old man when he was... Uh, like in a bed and he's got his son there and a nurse <laughs> and he's, he's just uh, like yeah he's, he's just saying some wild stuff I'm, I'm, I'm not going to repeat well, it well that's what we'll, we'll be like one day in the <laughs> yeah. in the care home we'll be like talking about uh, you know, what the sig- what the sigma and they're like for sure shut, shut up granddad do you remember Travis Scott or you know <laughs> And I used to do six set. Which, yeah, sure, Grandad. Whatever you say. <laughs> yeah, all right, Grandad. Pack it in now, will you? <laughs> I think it's high time for a, a slice of cake. Bit of cake. The Koch podcast. And today we've got, um, we've actually got a slice of cake. Unfortunately, our oven is still broken. Um, we're, we're, Very we're nice. Due, we're due a new oven, so this is not home baked, I'm afraid, but. I'm not complaining. Um, Thank you very much. Here's a serviette as well. See, we're learning on the Koch podcast. We've got serviettes because <laughs> everyone always gets sticky fingers, um, which get wiped on take my trousers. Rings off. In fact, well. I've got I've got the biggest slice here. So you, 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 the guest. No, I'm not. No, I'm not very hungry. No, honestly. Take it, take it, take it. Come on. This was Asda reduction. <laughs> Four pound to one eighty. It's giving away the podcast secrets. Yeah, I I love a good reduction. <laughs> oh, mate, how can you not? But, I walked in. Um, rings off for the cake that is, oh yeah of course that's a big move when you when you messaged me asking if I wanted any soup yeah I was just eating my lunch it was a late lunch it was a busy day um, I went into Sainsbury's it must have been about half four or five to get my meal deal and they just put out all of the reduction items mm. what, a, what a time to go in there's not a better time to go into a shop really is there mm-hmm. we um live near a big supermarket and uh yeah we've over the years tried to finesse the best time for the for the discounts and i think get the spreadsheet it's like monday morning Mm. it's good because a lot of the time we think it would be sunday afternoon because they'd be getting rid of stuff Mm. but we realized they would never actually discount it until after the shop closed Mm. so if you go like first thing monday 
mate, it's stacked with stuff. Really? And you can get like Is crazy... there a big production section? It's big enough. It's like three shelves worth. Three shelves? Yeah, and a lot of the time it gets busy because obviously we live in People Benminster. People wait in there. So there's a lot of old people in this area Cuban. that queue. Yeah, literally, you stand in like a like a big circle around mm. the, which is like really embarrassing to be part of that. No, I really. You're like looking around like I hope no one sees me here. But no, maybe take pride in it. Ah, oh, no, nah. I back it. True, I do love it. The bread section though, that that, that was always be more of like a free for all. When they put that out, people would what, go like, like fresh bakery bread. Or... Yeah, or kind of, or just like sometimes they would reduce like cookies or um, oh, I see, just like I loaves see. of bread for like ten p. Right. And you see some people with like twelve loaves of bread or something, <laughs> and you just know they've got a huge chest freezer, and they're not buying bread for like six months. Yeah. You know. You got to rate it. My best ever reduction was um, a 12 slice. It was a big ass birthday cake. Mm. It was reducing like 12 pounds to like 40p or something. And it was on the till in like a small shop. I was like, yeah. That's crazy. I'll be having that. 3.3% of the original it price. Was, it was ridiculous. And it was kind of bad. Not bad, but it, would t- it turned. It was past its best. <laughs> But um, that have a little yeah second year hang to it maybe mm. that was second year uni so nobody in the flat minded it was just a free cake oh what was a, f- a flat present kind of just well I'm not I'm gonna be well I could probably have eaten a twelve <laughs> person birthday cake um to myself but I thought it was wise not to that's fair wait so did you go to BIM right nah DBS DBS yeah, the better yeah, one yeah, yeah. yeah better one yeah, well arguably the better one well. From everyone I know that's gone to either, I don't think I've ever met anyone who's said I prefer BIM or like I'm really happy I went to BIM instead of DBS. Mm. It's always the other way around. In my experience from chance people who have been there, BIM, don't sue me, please. <laughs> BIM is different. I mean... It's more I based think... on the performance side, isn't it? Mm. Performance, but also like business and management and stuff. Mm. They do those kind of courses. If you want to be behind the scenes you're going to get a good course there whereas dbs is solely about like the production and the engineering and the game audio and um electronic music that's what it's about if you want to do production bim is not for you i would say because think, it's not the focus i think that's maybe where which is why i chose dbs yeah what because because you wanted to do production oh uh, yeah like, like engineering and sound engineering, engineering and you know, like studio recording um, yeah, I think that's why the um, overall opinion that I've had about BIM is because all the people that I chat to about is just producers. Mm-hmm. So the people at DBS are really happy with it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, BIM, maybe not so much. Some well, good people have been through DBS as well. Really? They have some like good alumni, the people that are doing like yeah. pretty well for themselves. You who's, know, Who's that? Like Joe Valick, and... <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> evidently. Um, I mean, Anais went there. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure Opa Dan did too. I don't quote me on that, um, but I'm pretty sure they both went through DBS. Um, I should probably know that to be fair. Some other big drum and bass people, T Lex, ne- probably whose names now escape me, and a lot of people who have gone on to work at like big recording studios and like right. be you know um, run. Company, like uh, I want to say Omen Audio maybe and there's a guy in my Chloe? class who's like um, his name's Artificial Red he's a jungle okay. producer and he like gets I think he runs a record label and nice. um, gets like vinyl presses on oh, it's like sick. jungle like even that that's like some some guy I mm. know yeah. You know, but there's plenty of other people that I don't know that are definitely like actually working in music yeah for sure um, which is sick because that's I, what it's all about. I do wonder how, or well, a my job role may be different, or you know helped out, or whether I'd just be doing something completely different if I did have a bit more foresight before go going to uni, mm. and if I did something I actually wanted to do. Yeah, I do mm. wonder. Well, but, but then it's like. Do you, is is learning on the job better like all the experience that I've now had mm. and you know working with other labels and things like that I would say well two things 
you've got a degree anyway. So that's like when, yeah. when I got to uni, I think one of the first things they taught us was like, that if you just get a degree, it doesn't matter. Maybe, or maybe it was my dad. Someone told me this. <laughs> it was like, if you just have a degree, mm. it's like, that's what employers will look for in like the first yeah. job or the first few years of your career. After that, they, it's just like, okay, you've got one, but you've, mm. I can see from the last 10 years of you working that you're clearly competent and have a job. Whereas, yeah, it's going to set you on a slightly different so trajectory, much. I guess. But the second thing is, um, you have a degree that if this fails, you yeah. could get like a real job. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas, yeah. like, I kind of always not regretted getting a music degree because that's not the right word. I don't regret it, but mm. I've often thought, oh, I, uh, what would the yeah if I had a like a real degree <laughs> would that benefit me more I don't know mm. in case like yeah the music industry does get replaced by AI or I just decide I don't want to do it anymore how valuable will yeah. my music degree be but I I think um I think as well it's good to kind of have that fire under your ass a bit as well because mm. differently for you as it as if well. If you don't feel you can fall back on your degree, and maybe I could fall back on the accounting side of things, but also future employers, potential employers don't listen to this, <laughs> but I really don't want to at all. Mm. So that is That's a good fire thing. under my ass and motivation. Um, For sure. Don't, to be fair, don't really feel like you need it too much, but um, but yeah, definitely. It's also nice just to have it though. You achieved it. Yeah. You got a first, like so did Mate. I, which I still find hard to believe. Like I can't believe. Mate, I got so do a first. I. Like you got I, a first as well. Yeah, but I worked yeah. hard for it, so like I feel proud that I did it. Mate, I, I feel like a phony. I don't think I worked that hard <laughs> for it. I, I see. I think I worked smart, not hard. Mm. If That's that makes sense, work, because in uni, you know, you, once you kind of figured out the system of how they assess things. Mm. Then you can, yeah. Like I'd, I'd just work with my friends on my course. Mm. Um, we'd get all the stuff that we needed to do done. Mm. Work really hard on like a presentation or uh, an essay or whatever, whatever together mm. for like literally a few days, and that would be it for like a few weeks. Mm. Like we'd just do Invicta stuff all day. That's good. Um, and the, but I I did have to pull my finger out. I did my dissertation in like ten days nice. before it was due. In. Everyone um, sort of does that. <clears throat> Not everyone does that, but a lot of people have that, and a lot of people don't finish it. Well, so well done for finishing cause, it. Because I just didn't want to do it at all. So yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of hard, wasn't it? And I needed that. Um, there must be a, w a word for it or a, a term for it where you leave it till last minute and then you get that motivation. Like right, I've actually got to do this now. I think it's called just like shit in it. <laughs> it's like I have to do this. Yeah, I I was I kind of worked on mine a lot, and then I did most of it in like two weeks towards the end. Where I because I'd done the sort of research and I'd done like got the data, but then there mm. was the actual writing it that yeah. was the bit Daunting. that I put it off. But then I just went into I just went to campus every day for like two weeks and just spent mm. like four or five hours a day, maybe more. I don't remember just writing, and yeah, it paid off. Even though I didn't want to do it, but how many words did you have to write? Uh, ten thousand. Yeah, so which is long. But I got, I did like so. Well. I got like a eighty plus. On my really? Guess. I'm pretty sure it was like an eighty-three. Crazy. Which is mad. Well, well done. Yeah, that's. I know. I've not really heard of those sorts of scores before. To but, be honest, but it was DBS. <laughs> no, it's, no it's still disrespect. A, it's DBS, still a university. I mean, like I've always, I've still often a wondered, like, oh, you know, if it was, if I was writing a dissertation on like. Um, law or something mm. would I have been able to achieve the same marks I don't think so mm. which is a good sign though it means I was doing the right thing yeah true um, football yeah five a side you play five a side right I do what's um what's how, do you, your... how do you know about <laughs> I think you told me <laughs> oh right <laughs> um, no I just knew um, <laughs> could yeah, tell what, how does it how does that go what, what's your like desired position are you like a, a tasmanian devil on the pitch what what would you expect i'd expect like a like defending mid i mean five aside is kind mid. of kind of like all over the place anyway but i'd see yeah. you like in the center yeah kind of not i'm not maybe not at the back but 
um, able to get back and defend. So if you were to liken me to a football player, who would you say? Um, Vidic. Vidic. Yeah. I would take that. <laughs> I, I'd yeah. I'd I'd say not too far off to be fair. Vidic crossed with maybe <clears throat> like maybe skulls. Scott, I wish I had the pass in range. These are both of... manual players. I don't know them anymore. Yeah, for no, well, I'll, I'll definitely take Vidic. I do play at the back for our five-a-side team. Um, I have the agility of a fridge, <laughs> so um, yeah, I I don't tend to get forward. I mean, I will to make space at the back so other players can drop. Mm. Like I'll I'll make a run forward purely to drag one of their play- players over and yeah create more space in other areas of the pitch mm. um but yeah everyone at five side knows i'm not great going forward um i can't really dribble very well um i can disrupt i can block i'm not afraid to put my body on the line for our, our, our teams the smokers the, <laughs> the, the grassroots smokers um so i put my my body on the line for the smokers every wednesday um yeah, I, I'd definitely take a Vidic comparison. I'd, I'd say it's... I'd like to say it's um, relatively close to that. Maybe not skulls, mm. but I I have been known to score like a a long shot, like inside your own screamer. half kind of thing. Yeah, nice. A couple of them. Um, Surprisingly hard work, though, football. I started playing at work at the joined the five-a-side. Oh, it's actually more like seven-a-side, but... Mm. After the first game, I was like, oh, my God. I thought I was like, fairly to, fit. But did you was, manage to play a full game? Uh, I think that first week, me and my colleague from our team both joined it the same week. So we uh-huh. were just like rolling sub in Fair. Yeah. each other. I think there was like eight people, so it was a bit of a stopping. But yeah, it's, that's, that's it's what we do as well. It's hard, man. It is like, and my legs and my hips after. Yeah. I've forgotten how intense it is, you know? Make my lungs as well, because what I used the to... <laughs> what, yeah, yeah. I, 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 did, I did smoke for like six or seven years as well um and then it was just like i was just vaping a bit at the time and i remember you know when your lungs are in pain and then you start like tasting blood in your mouth mm. and stuff yeah. like yeah the first five is like absolutely ruined me probably the first few to be fair but then you slowly get into it um and yeah i like my, my fit is pretty good now i'd say it's good. um you do pick it up quickly as well with the football. Like by the third week, I was like, mm. I felt confident, you know? Yeah, for sure. It, in in th- my ability to run around. At least, yeah, not yeah. Necessarily in my skill level. Okay, but. I see. Yeah, I I think it's a, I think it's a consistency thing. Like, even, like so many uh, lads have come and, uh, you know, tried out the, the fiver side and they absolutely die first week. Because I think as well, when you're when you first get into it, those first five minutes are amazing. You know, you're mm-hmm. running around the pitch, making runs, forget it's an probably hour. <laughs> sc- maybe scoring, and then yeah, you f- you forget it's on for. Um, we do twenty minute halves, so four, yeah, forty minutes, like a minute break for half time, and yeah, people are just done after like after the five minutes, like the golden five minutes, mm. and don't return for <laughs> quite some time. But yeah, we we do that on Wednesdays. We've been doing it for for years, really. We've got a group chat of probably like nearly thirty of us, I'd say. Nice. Um, do you play against each like yourselves, or do you play against other? Teams? Uh, maybe like a couple times every couple months. Um, just like if opposition doesn't turn up, then we'll just have like a four side game against mm. each other kind of thing. Did you play against Dazed? <clears throat> we did. Yeah, the charity football match. How did that go? Uh. Good overall. Good. Well, we we raise money for charity. That's the main thing. Um, yeah, everyone had a good time. No injuries. No one taking it too seriously. Uh, yeah, all very light hearted. That's good. Um, yeah, days were one nil up at half time, and then at the beginning of the second half, we came out of the blocks, scored three goals nice. within five or six minutes. Yeah. So three one up, and. Then, yeah, our team's just getting tired. I think there's a couple of areas of organisation which weren't quite there. Um, and we ended up conceding twice after that. So it was a three-all draw. 
That's a nice way to end it, though. Yeah. It? On a charity match. Yeah, for sure. Three three classic. Yeah, I won't mention the <clears throat> penalty shootout we did after the days what I won, but um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah leave so it, I, leave it at the at the, at the score. Yeah, the three all draw. Yeah. Nice. And we will do a rematch in well next April, I guess. Exciting times. Hopefully. So. Very exciting times. Yeah. Well. Um, we'll come to an end fairly soon. We've been just over an hour now, of mm-hmm. just yapping away. Um, the final thing, I just wanted to kind of come back to, um, just like the label, but first, like just kind of drum and bass and like why, not why, but yeah, kind of why, why drum and bass? Why, why did you decide that? especially Anton and you together to keep it at drum and bass as well for so long, you could have probably gone into more 140 or especially with the like, um, new UKG Mm -hmm. revival that's been going on. Um, yeah. Why have you kind of stuck to the roots? Um, we, well, funny enough, we did start out a sister label at one point called full circle, Mm. which was meant to be, uh, well, it was, uh, just, open to any genre so we had some garage tunes signed some 140 uh some breaks some like slower jungle like 160 um even had a lo-fi tune signed as well um no tech house though nah not (laughs) not how I, i did used to really like like future house Future House. Yeah. Damn, that's, I haven't heard that term. Yeah, like, time. you know... Like, future Garage as well. Not but, not Future Garage. I've not heard... Not listened okay. to Future Garage, I don't think. That's another term. I haven't heard that for years, but... but what, future yeah, house f- Future House when... Be, I might be getting oh, confused, but... It, it was like, you know, like the Oliver Heldens oh. and Chammy. Yeah. Maybe like oh. Deep House, like wow. Future House, Deep House. Jack in House kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah. Like, we used to play that at, at Friday night. Oh, mate, I'm trying to remember... Gatherings. Who else I used to listen to? But I used to listen to that and like Donk, bit of Gabba. Um, <laughs> Gabba? Yeah, this was when I was like, mad like 12, 13, 14. Well, okay. Uh, I was, well, I think that comes back to, we're talking about Cheltenham, my up, my upbringing. We used to meet up in fields. Like, we'd like sneak out of our houses, mm. uh, meet up in fields and yeah. Like, listen to some Gabba. I, mean, not so, I think not my taste home. was Gabba. <laughs> <laughs> Don, a lot of Donk for sure. Um, Amberleaf 3 and 1, Big Bottle of Cider. Oh, rest in peace, Amberleaf 3 and 1, man. Yeah, iconic. I think you should make a little shrine somewhere. I've actually, I've got uh, in my mum's house, I've got a box full no of way. Um, old Siggy rappers. Have you got a three in one? There's bound to be in there. I haven't looked for a while. If you there need is to it, frame be, it. I think I might have like some of the special three in, three in ones. You know, they did like white ones and like orange ones. I don't fit. I so don't did, did a white one. It was Amberleaf Blonde. Okay. Interesting. Um, no, I don't think I have to. But I was fit. never into GV Smooth. Oh, uh, mate. I, I, do GV Smooth. I, went, I went through everything. My, my first. Sterling I liked because it was cheap. My first pack of Nine cigarettes pounds. that I bought was Carlton Reds. <laughs> And it was only because the premier by my mate's house, uh, they'd go to chuck them out. And if you waited out there, they'd be like, oh, do you want to buy it for like two quid or whatever? Yeah. And you'd have to pay cash, obviously. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had a box of carton reds. I was like, oh, I quite like these. Mm. So I went for, yeah, like Amberleaf, GV, Cutters I was on for a long time. Mm. Um, yeah, Sterling was decent. Yeah. This is a good topic. I'm, I can talk about this. Um, <laughs> I don't smoke anymore either, but Neither. I kind of miss it. I don't Some... miss it though. It's dirty, <laughs> but like that sounds like you're trying to convince yourself. Yeah, true. <laughs> um, yeah, G- G- uh, GV I never, never liked. Amberleaf was kind of meh. Mm. Um, there was one that I used to. It was Sterling. What was the other cheap one? It used to be like an eight gram Pal Mal. Oh my Pal Mal God. eight grams, and it was like two pound yeah. fifty six or something for like eight yeah. grams. That was that was dirty, man. That was the one where if you'd had a couple of drinks and you smoked a Pal Mal, like it could make you throw up, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, it obviously was... Malboys were good. Yeah, like special treat would be a Malbo Gold. Mate, there there was a shop in town, um... Pueblo. Pueblo. I used to yeah, I used to fuck with the Pueblo. I don't think I've heard of it. It's like un, no additives, so they'd say. So you think oh, healthy. It's a bit like a Native American, uh, like American spirit. It's the okay. same, same vibe of like mm. that kind of tobacco. This is some deep tobacco lore. Yeah, I know. Um, Jeez. Yeah, yeah I, I need to bring up my box 
then they yeah. can decorate the wall. Mate, so, I, I would. That, that would be a good be, addition. That might tempt me, though, into smoking the city. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so... Uh, I... Where was I We've going? become majorly sidetracked here. Yeah. We're we... talking about Donk in a field. Oh, you said you asked why drum and bass. Yeah. We've ended up on tobacco law um <laughs> great topic yeah i think we need to do a whole side episode <laughs> yeah. talk, talk about tobacco for this, an hour and a half just <laughs> loads of cigarettes everywhere <laughs> reviewing come smoke do a little series come smoke with me yeah like, well, bring your own but no weed allowed just <laughs> 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 um yeah so we, we had that uh had full circle kind of set up and yeah it was like we got all the branding for it um went deep into that even did a couple of 360 events like multi-genre mm -hmm. um like booked like badger zorro uh chowler uh buntai uh skeptic like a load of sick artists mm -hmm. um but we basically because there's only three of us and Inv Invicta takes up so much time already, mm. it would have been something where it's like we can't, it can't be at detriment to Invicta because mm. if it's going to work, we need to put our all into it. Yeah. Uh, so if so we introduce... half past two projects. Yeah, exactly. Um, so then it came to, if we are going to do Full Circle, it's going to have to be even more of our own personal time. Like after all the Invicta stuff's done, then late at night, then you do the full circle stuff and it's like, mm. we actually need sleep and yeah. so look after ourselves a bit. So we did give up on it and it was it was a heartbreaker messaging all of those artists that I'd signed tunes off being like, um, yeah, I'm sorry, we're just not going forth with the label anymore. Um, so we, we have had plans to, um, to answer your question, we have our plans to, but yeah, it's it's just always been the main focus, the main passion, um, and yeah, I think because of the opportunity we see with it in future, mm. um, yeah, we just want to continue going with it, I Keep guess. It, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's nicely. I was going to end kind of with, the. um, do you see it continuing to become like a poppy kind of genre? Because there's a lot of pop DMB. A lot oh, of dr it, drum and bass as a whole, like, yeah, not necessarily the whole genre turning into pop, but that but they, that side of it, yeah, more pop D and B, more drum and bass in the charts because it's sort of happening. It is. I mean, and it has been happening for time, but and it's it, never been right. I it felt, won't be at like, its peak yet for a year or two, I'd say either, because I, I that saw, soon. Uh, that's quite soon well Chasing Status have just done their tune with Stormzy that's true um, Tiesto has just done his tune with Headaches and Bass Layers mm -hmm. so these are like the big these are the big people yeah mm. um, Boo was in the studio with H a couple of days ago <laughs> really yeah um, so yeah these big crossovers are happening mm. um, I think DWA just did a tune as well a drum and bass he, he's done quite a few to be yeah, fair yeah I mean since day he's been on that, yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a kind of Recently did Actual one movies. with uh, P Money and Doctor uh, and Diagnostics. That was on Hospital. Um, shout out Hospital as well. Those guys are yeah, yeah great great team. Um, helped, helped us out a lot because we were, I don't think it's very well known, but we were on their business mentoring scheme. Oh, really? Um, so it was something that they like encouraged us to apply for. Um, just chatting with them at, mm -hmm. you know, wherever... And I remember I sat there for like two days and wrote paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs. And they were like, yeah, like no one's ever <laughs> written an application like that. <laughs> like it's just usually like a couple of sentences. <laughs> um, so Did they even read it? They must have read it. I hope so. But now you say it. <laughs> they saw it and they're not. like, that's fine. Yeah, come on. <laughs> you deserve it, man. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we learned loads from them. Um, a lot of like tightening up of back end stuff and you know that was definitely a catalyst of turning it from a group of mates doing it as a passion project to a job yeah yeah for sure um a career even making things watertight yeah yeah hopefully mm. hopefully um but yeah do i see it going more into that way yes because it's doing well and the 
longer that it does perform well for, the longer that it's getting the numbers. Oh, another one actually, just remembered a little sound in Sugar Babes. Yeah. Came out recently. I'm not sure if you saw that, but that came out recently. Um, I that one. But yeah, as what, uh, actual like Sugar Babes. Yeah. Collab. Yeah. That's cool. They like they did um did all the promo shoots together and everything. That's sick. I've heard some something another big artist. I can't remember who it is for the life of me now though. But I was super Are surprised. They? No, it was like I swear it was like um like a female artist. Um, and I heard it. I was like, wait, is that like it wasn't Kylie, but it was something like that. I was like, why is that? Why is oh, this person doing D and B? Oh no, I was I was going to say Natasha Bedingfield, but that was oh that was a badger. That was garage, yeah, that was garage. Yeah. Um, I might actually just be thinking of Badger because he's kind of yeah. doing that kind of. He was I mean, in the studio with Michael Dapper. Who? The, you know the man's not hot guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the studio with him like either yesterday. But he's a great story because it, I mean I don't know much about his story mm. per se, but his sort of kind of come up has been yeah i mean he's been on it for time but it's, i heard about him through that venga boys tune earlier this year was it must have been earlier mm. this year and then suddenly like the natasha beddingfield official yeah. release in the charts 100 million streams yeah like, crazy what the fuck that's sick crazy know? and it can happen to kind of anyone it's kind of inspiring yeah I, I, the first time i met uh badger was in our kitchen the house we still live in now mm. before tokyo world because he was MCing on the Invicta Takeover. He was MCing. He was Badger was MCing. What I on, did not know he was on, an MC. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if he even was. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is like maybe just like a hype man kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, it was an Invicta Takeover at Tokyo World, <laughs> in like 2020 or something. Mm. Um, maybe even 2019. I can't remember. Ages ago, and yeah, I just remember he was on the mic, so. To see his journey from <laughs> shouting down the mic at yeah. Tokyo World to, you know, yeah, just where he's at now is unreal. Like, mm. what a job he's done. I know. Impressive. Crazy. So is Invicta going to be, like, going to turn into a pop D&B label? Uh, I don't see that happening. Well, in, it, it, it like depends. sell out one or two tunes just to kind of it, make some cash? It, it's... Well, I, I like don't not think, in like I don't mean that in like a negative. I don't think we'd way. ever release anything that we wouldn't want to release, though. Mm. We've our ethos with music has always been because we don't really have a specific sound, mm. and our ethos yeah, it does is, seem to vary quite a lot. Yeah, and our ethos has always just been if we rate it, we'll release it, and that's mm. it. Mm. Uh, because there's a, obviously quite a large team of us, we gauge a fairly good opinion. Um, so yeah, we, we've always just release whatever we've rated so mm. i don't know maybe someday if sometimes there's... you stumble upon that tune and yeah it's just and the one that does numbers yeah for sure and you know maybe someday if something does happen like that and it goes into the charts or something then i don't know maybe people are think like oh and victor is selling out or whatever mm. but it would purely just be the fact that we rated a tune and mm. it's gone down that avenue you know that audience has yeah received it and i don't think there's a problem with either side of that i think yeah people can think what they want but yeah and um, I... that's the thing about dmb i think no matter how big it gets in the charts hmm. and that commercial side of it it always kind of feels a little bit different and it's able to keep its authentic side i think, I think it's, it's underground roots i it's... think will remain that's it it's got the the anchor mm. is the underground scene, which that's never going to go away from drum and bass because people are always going to like that fast paced, grotty tunes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whether that's minimal, neuro, um, jump up, you know, some jungle even fits that. Um, yeah, dance floor even potentially, you know, it doesn't tickle my fancy personally, mm. but I know loads of people love dance floor. Um, but yeah, I like I would never, I'd never like unequivocally say no to that kind of release because if it fits what we're about, then mm. yeah, why not? That's good. Like let's go for it. But um, but yeah, there's definitely criteria there for us, um, which 
yeah it's it's mainly just whether we agree on a tune like but that's the main that's a good sign though that because you're not doing it for the money i mean not i don't no. not that i got that impression anyway but i think the brand would like look extremely label. different if if we're doing it for the money because mm. there's obvious ways of how you can go about that yeah and yeah the the label would just look completely different like we wouldn't be going for beatport number ones we'd be going for uk top 40s so. And sometimes your beatport number one, or one day your beatport number one will be a UK top four. <laughs> Hope that, that would be sick. No doubt about that it. That would be sick. No doubt. There's no question of it. Because all the other big labels, they all have one or two tunes. Like like Hospital, mm. I'm sure I can't think off the top of my head now, but there are some b- tunes that they must have had that were in the chart. Was there a high contrast tune in the charts a few years ago? Probably. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, and but any and other labels as well they they kind of have mm. a moment yeah um, for sure probably like you say not even on purpose they just have a yeah. tune and it gets picked up and then it just run people run away with it well the, the, I think there's only so much you so much prediction you can have a tune mm. have have for a tune as well because obviously you can gauge the vibe for it and you know see which audience it's gonna fall into and mm. who's gonna receive it but. You know, social media is such a key part of how music works in general now as well that, mm. you know, it is a gamble and there is elements of luck to it as well. But yeah, I, I think, I do think drum and bass will continue to rise. Um, but then, you know, taste is cyclical, isn't it? And mm. right now, people coming to uni are coming to garage raves and drum and bass raves and that's kind of nationally spread like that's why clubs like prism are having to shut down because mm. there's there's no prison boys anymore like good with it <laughs> <laughs> like they they've all discovered salmon salmon colored tight sport tops and mm. are getting veneers and wearing alexander mcqueen's and going to house raves <laughs> like that is the new prism yeah like where For else sure. dare i say where else project is the new prism <laughs> Nah, I'm joking, I'm joking. I but mean, it depends what they put on, isn't it? I guess so. They could imagine that a prism takeover at Warehouse Project. Bingo Lingo, Warehouse I'd, Project. I'd, with uh, Dick and Dom back to back with um, uh, with Fisher. There you go. <laughs> Is that your ideal and, night? And Badger. <laughs> and back Badger. to back to back. <laughs> Do you know what? Dick, Dick and Dom back to back Badger, I think, would actually go off. That would be jokes. Back to back fish. Have you seen well. them live? I've actually not. Me neither. I've seen the just announced, I think it was today, their tour dates. And I was like, I, firstly, I would love to interview them. That would just be funny as mm. fuck. Um, I'm not sure if it's possible, but I, I, it's definitely worth a try. And I would just kind of like to Depending see them. Depending what venue it is. It would feel surreal to see them, I think. Mm. Dep- d- I think they go in SWX in Bristol. Which is a, a strange venue to begin with because um, when I went there as a student, it was the worst club I've ever been to. I hated it. But then I've yeah. seen, like, I also Loads have seen fights. King Cool there. I was like, really? Yeah, because I would like it's a venue as well. They do like, yeah, yeah, live yeah, yeah, gigs. Yeah, it was actually a really good venue. It was massive for starters, and the sound was good. Mm. Um, so Dick and Dom, you know, could Crazy. Be the move. Crazy. It's it's not so that. You see figures like that even playing drum and bass, like becoming DJs. Yeah, but so many people, so many like actors and stuff do these days. Or even like, isn't Jack Grealish a DJ? <laughs> what? I think so. <laughs> DJ Grillo. I have not heard that. That's terrible. That's an industry I plan. I think That's so. Got to be an industry <laughs> plan. <laughs> if he starts releasing tunes, <laughs> then yeah, potentially. But I think everyone, everyone wants to be a DJ, man. Everyone wants to be a rapper. Like, well, it's it's just an expression of your music taste at the end of the day, isn't it? Mm, that's true. So, if you and it's a good way to make money if you're not into yeah. the shows or getting picked for England anymore. <laughs> you still need to pay the bills, mate. Oh, he, yeah. I'm not sure he needs the money. I wonder to what be his fair. fee is. What d- DJ fee? Yeah. Well, Jack Grealish. Um, wait. Can you mute this if I, if I? I can mute it in post. Yeah. So. Um, you know, yeah. Um, paid him twenty five grand to play a set. Uh, did Did you see when? Well, yeah, it was twenty five grand. That's a big fee. So if he's that much, 
I think he's like yeah wow so I think Grealish would be yeah a lot more I'd wow say. that's crazy but also it depends what venue and stuff like that as well because I think um, you know Arcadia Glastonbury mm. when Calvin Harris played on there I think it was only like a grand or something <laughs> which is really odd but then I think all of the extra costs like the plus 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 mm. and like his entourage and stuff like that was probably like over 20 grand mm. or maybe more maybe wow. it was over 200 grand wow some big money out there yeah for sure if someone wants to pay me 50 pounds to do a set <laughs> then um, please get in contact with me on instagram i would happily oblige likewise <laughs> right um i think it's time to wrap up before we do this is your moment um promote everything promote moon promote invicta What's so coming? Uh, upcoming, we've got our third UK tour starting a week tomorrow uh, in Cheltenham. And then the Saturday, we've got Bristol at Document. Um, we've got 12 dates spanning the nation from yeah next Friday to New Year's Eve, um, in which we'll be doing a house party uh, in the evening as like a prize. Um sponsored by Monster Energy getting, you know, a load of drum and bass headliners into a house party setting to play there. And then a full lineup at a club which would be, you know, close to the house party. Uh so that's the kind of setup for the tour. And we're rounding off the tour on New Year's Eve. Um our by far our biggest show to date, uh Moon Festival in collaboration Buzzing. with Rumble in the Jungle and Briz Tech. Um, so yeah, a, a nice Bristol collaboration with three three Bristol brands. Uh, it's a secret location uh, yet to be announced, um, but there's gonna be three warehouses. Um, if we sell out, it'd be 3,000 people. Wow. Um, we've spent a lot of money on like decor and stage designs um and lighting and uh projection mapping onto various things uh walkways we're having like hyperspace tunnels and things like that so yeah it's going to be a proper immersive experience it's a lot beyond just the lineup um yeah we've gone all out on that side of things so um come through to that it's something we're hopefully going to make an annual New Year's Eve festival. That's so, incredible. Um, yeah, ho hopefully that works out. And then on the label coming up, we've got releases from Deep Notion, a uh, New Zealand artist. Nice. Um, he's been seeing support from like Andy C and stuff like, yeah, crazy level tunes. Uh, he's, he's moving to Bristol soon. Of course. <laughs> um, of course. Well, it's actually, it's a duo. One of them's coming to Bristol, one of them's staying in New Zealand, which is very smart. Might be tricky. Oh, no, actually, no, because they can play... To, oh, wow. Genius. Yeah. They can play sets all over the world. That's what I'm saying. Like, how, how do they get so quick? <laughs> <laughs> so I just saw them in Bristol. Sets at the same night, same yeah. place, same time. Um, and we've got... Uh, what else we've got? A latte release called Everybody Skank. Who? Sorry? L uh, latte. Oh, latte, yeah. Um, Jay Buki, his shutdown VIP is coming out, finally. Um, and then probably our biggest release to date, uh, a track called Boss Man, uh, produced by Turno. Sick. And vocals by P Money. <laughs> so, yeah. It's going to be good. Big, big link of that. I'll, I'll show you the tune after. Could the be part. the chart one. You never know. Hopefully, hopefully. You do never know. Great. Well, thank you very much for coming. Um, of course. Appreciate it. Any? Can you give an exclusive name for Moon Festival? Um, you can't say no. I will say, well, my my input to the lineup was a Napes and Strategy 140 to 175 set. So that's going to be one for the history books. That's going to be heavy. I'd say, yeah. Film it. Yeah. Definitely, we'll have a lot of cameras in, in the buildings, for sure. That's amazing. Um, well, we'll go on. Finally, just wanted to say big ups to Joe Valak, ah, the host. Thank you very much. Um, doing, I think, a lot of unsung work in Bristol, which is Cheers. getting some good recognition now. Anyone that I speak to that knows about you, credits you. 
Good you know, the, the interviews are sick. The podcast is coming on really well. So, yeah. Big, Big ups to Valak and thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. Big ups. Victor Will, out. <laughs> and Joe Valak, also out. Peace.